And welcome to some one action again. Wano monthly tournament August. Yes, we are now in August. And round one in this classic Swiss Dare tournament. And we have two well known faces in front of us. Leifens on the right, swinging the Norwegian flag. And on the left, Rampage. Both with some pack divisions. Pact ain't suffering anymore. Take that, hippie. And <laughs> we have Rampage with 4th Mochitsen and Leifens with 39th. And we can have a look onto the bracket for this as well. As it is quite interesting. Um, yeah, we have a lot of known faces here once more, but also a couple of new ones. For example, do we have SU25 ready for booty busting? AKA Flix, and we have Silvergroon, who we saw also in the 2v2 tournament, and X Stark from Steel Division coming over here as well. He has a tough opponent in week number one in form of the Derek. And whilst, yeah, we also have a couple of other names here as well Rampage, Rabbit Scroll, a lot of known names. Medi also played in the 2v2 tournament, General Mosquito. So, yep. Yeah. Should be a fun one. And it is for price to the pool again. As the fifth one of monthly is crowdfunded via Match Reno again. And you can add price money without having to pay anything. All you have to do is click this claim code at 55 cents for free. Or visit a couple of websites and add some money for free as well. You don't have to click anything on those websites. You just have to visit them. And exclamation mark Match Reno in the chat gets you there. Right now. At least it should. Or I just give you a link that way. I think I put in all, everything here, yeah, but I forgot to make put the board on online. <laughs> so yeah, it is online now. And yeah, Metrino bot. Now click the links and add some money on YouTube. Down below, as always, you can find the Metrino as well. So yeah, if you want to show some appreciation to these players, want to make the tournament a bit more worthwhile for them and you have a slight bit of your time for it feel free to come over here and click these buttons click these websites to add you can easily add over a dollar of prize money with just visiting websites plus this code up top here to the prize money so yeah if everyone does that everyone on youtube easily 100 dollars in there uh, got you all covered there guys we, let's do it together. Sure, doesn't look big if you do it on your own, but if everyone does it, it becomes flash mob mentality, guys. You gotta have that. If we all change something, we can make the world a better place, or at least the price pool of an esports tournament bigger. Let's do it. <laughs> but now, let's come back after that sellout section and go into this game, as it is a nice one. Because, first of all, the matchup, we haven't seen that often. And on the map, we haven't seen at all in the tournament yet. We are on Geysa, one of the new maps that was added with the last patch. It's specifically 1v1, one of the two maps that is specifically called the 1v1 map by Eugen. It's a bit narrower than the other 1v1 maps we had, but not that much. It has six zones, which sounds like a good amount. And it has a bit of an asymmetrical positioning here, though, in the center. And I feel like... Rampage side is the slightly stronger one, as you can go into golf relatively aggressively. So we will see how Leifens defends against that in this game number one here. Rampage coming out so in with Falchion Vegas obviously, has the advantage there, as fourth has some East German Falchion Vegas, some of them including the Medis ATGM, some others have some RPGs on them. And they're all pretty strong. Twella and Puck coming in from the rear. The Puck coming in a 100mm. And they come in an MTLB. Sadly, this division, unlike the KDA, can't get them in a fast tra transport. You have to bring them in, in a 79kmh transport. As a Rapira in a 108km transport is really dangerous. Is really, really dangerous. Oh, it's really hot here in Germany. 
So I just popped some ice into a nice tea and it's, oh, is it yeah, refreshing right now. Had a super exhausting day behind me. But good to be here, guys. It's good to be here. And thanks for joining, everyone. Let's make this a fun one. On the other side, Lathans coming in with some Spesnuts, coming in with some MIAs. And Redgar Heavies, Spesnuts crew. A lot of nice forces here as well. Two CVs from the get go versus the one on the other side. All zones in front are plus two, only the rear zones are plus three. So, countering these from the get go is pretty worthwhile. As otherwise, if you don't take any CVs at the get go, the enemy has a plus three tick at you, which is already 120 points per minute, which means that you fastly go into the territory where you have to catch up quite a bit later on in the game. So at least Bravo and Foxtrot you should cover from the get-go on your side. But obviously it looks like Lathans wants a plus two tick on his opponent there with an extra one. Is a 100 point investment though that he won't have at the front line. So a bit of extra pushing power there for Rampage on the front line from the get-go. Here we go. So uh, let's do this. Stola coming in. Rapira coming in, MiG-21 AA, coming in from some helo hunting, ooh, that could be brutal, the coops are not around, ooh, MiG-23 MLA Diesel, coming in for the hunt, gets one of them, can it get the second one, gets hit here, coop, can you finish the job, ah, coop, not in range, ooh, this is unlucky, Spesnuts, at least survive with one hit point, But this is really not a good start here. Especially not as it's also going for the hunt for another one. Not quite getting there. Coop though, not in range. MiG-23 really close to shooting this one down. If it would have gotten both MiG-21, this would have been a great start for Lathans. This way, it's obviously a pretty good start for Rampage. Getting the MiG-23, getting the Mi-8 helicopter. Stopping the Spesnats from going to the front line as fast as they wanted. Super strong start there. MiG-8 T and Spaznet crew though still in the south. No Strella around just yet there. Two CVs coming in now for Rampage. Is there another CV coming in on the other side with the first tick? Not quite yet. So Lathan's ticking up currently, but um, Rampage will have a tick for a while as well. If the CV comes up here and should get a tick there as well. Rechvetka heavies moving really far forward, but... Culture Meagers already here, and they are in a building. So the, yeah, Lathan's trying to rush up there. Not quite sure if he wins this, even if he gets there. Oh, a lot of his units already took heavy damage there. One of his Red Redka heavies nearly down already. Looks like he will lose this fight, actually. One versus two victory there for Rampage, it seems like. As Rampage also has higher veterancy. Three star versus one star veterancy here, actually. So... His units are a lot stronger there, and they had the building advantage for so long. Yeah, beating two Rajvetka heavies here. Bad infantry engagement there for Lathans. ADBV also getting hit hard here by the Medis. Has to disengage, already on Half-Life. BM1P coming around as well. Can it dodge behind? No. Ooh, bad micro there from Lathans. Thought he just tried to bait out the Medis. Is he baiting the Medis out here? Yes, okay. Now you can come forward again. And fire on this unit until they kill it. He should have done that more often here. But Jvetka Heavy under fire. Falchamigas tried to disengage. Jvetka Heavy is now trying to get on top of it. Viven RP RMG A18. But gets stunned down. And should get killed off here. Relatively quickly now. Down to two hit points. MiG-21 rocket though. Coming in for the Maddie's Motostralki here. Nearly killing them. But getting hunted down by MiG-31. Oh, it's 79. I thought it's 39. But I looked wrongly on this whole thing. But it makes this whole thing even more interesting. Yeah, right, it's Presnut's crew. Sorry for the misinformation there. But yeah, MiG-31. Ooh, hot. Osas and Coops. So, a lot of strong air defense. MiG-23 card, MiG-31 card. Osas, Coops. Air defense should be pretty strong here. Still... The Osa and the Coop with bad line of sight get the MiG-21, but 
me 8 goes down before it can be saved. Rampage up on the tick. BRDM on the way though. What a Stalky Maddy spin down. So, should be interesting. Should be interesting. ADBV falling back. Motor Stalky Maddies out of Maddies. So, I don't, not quite sure why the TADBV falls back here. Feels like that could stay around here. Keep up some firing. But more infantry coming up. The Red Dragon heavy push in here was quite suicidal. Um, also, a lot of units a bit far back here. Okay. Like, you need to win this forest. You can't give up this forest. Like, even if you think the enemy is in this forest, you have to fight for this forest, basically, as the blue side. As this is basically deep in your territory. Like, the middle of the map is here. So, giving up this forest would be really bad. So, I'm not quite sure why his T-62s are not up here. And, and some re uh, recon units as well. And they should try to push in there at least. Like, you kind of also want to get into this forest. You can't just give this up. Um, but, yep. Yeah. Lathan's giving up a lot of map here, for sure. And that's not great on this map. Meanwhile, a lot of D30s coming in. Rampages, special unit. Let's see what they can do. Motorstalky Maddies here. will now get finished up. Where's the TADB? We went over here. Guess the Ural might come here for repairs. Or at least some Ural is on the way. Yes, it is. SU-25 rockets. Going for this building. Yeah. It's with quite a couple of them, but not finishing the job. Brother gets two rockets in already. Can it finish the job? No, it can't. But SU-25 will be home for a while. We'll have to get repairs. Ping from left or knowing where that Strella is. So Lathan's now. She's dead. Coop's coming up on the side of Rampage as well. Not a big fan of the Coop over here. Don't think you need the Coop too, too badly in this division. And I'm surprised we see Coops instead of Dosas, like, I feel like the Tunguska is really strong now. It's so interesting to see the coop. I feel like the coop's mi mission is basically fulfilled by the MiG-31s in this deck. You rather want some strong anti-helicopter, though, against... Yeah, no, Forf has strong helicopters as well. But Osa is also pretty solid against helicopter, but Tunguska is even better, as it has... as it outranges helicopters, whilst Osa doesn't. So Osa is a pretty good all-rounder, like... There's nothing wrong with getting Osas, but a coop? Don't know. Not the biggest fan of that here. But that might just be me. Maddie's moving forward. Also, the coops on the side of the Soviets come with lo one less base veterancy than the ones on the other side. They have the same veterancy here, but that means he upgraded them. Uh, whilst empty LB and so on moving forward. D30 sitting in the rear and sitting up there nicely. Another D30 coming around as well. Lathan's slightly up in point but not really meaningful there. So Perry Apio coming in from the rear now. We get some CQC firepower in here. Should be an interesting match now. As Rampage has a bit of ground advantage but obviously Lathans should have the better late game combined arms with stuff like the Toss, like the like the Burrito, or the TADB, MiG-31, Tunguska maybe. So yeah, all of these things should give Lathans great firepower. But obviously the masses will be also on the other side. Some Shilka AA coming in as well. Some good helicopters could come in as well. Coop coming in now in numbers. Four Coop on the map for the long range AA. Mi 8 MTA sitting back here for recon against any tries of sneak attempts. Good idea. Good idea of having that there against that. Let's be staying at the 12 12. But giving up so much of the map just feels wrong to me. Like you kind of have to fight to try to hold it here. 
Obviously, file showmakers get a bit more space so that they get in here kind of makes sense, but not having anything in this forest feels like a big mistake on this map by Lathans on my side. Not for me. Conquerors moving forward. Will when will Rampage try to get a CV in here? He already has some units in there. Can Rampage fill it up with more? D30s set up. Five of them online. What will be their targets? Rampage really in love with the D30. It's a really rapid firing artillery piece, so it's somewhat useful, for sure. Like, if you want to use a uh, tube artillery, D30s would most likely be the one to go for. D20 can be good as well, you just don't quite get it in the same numbers and you only get it in 39th. But D30 is readily available in a lot of divisions and its high rate of fire makes it pretty useful. More Rapiras coming up as well. Though against T80s it doesn't do too much, but Leifant is a fan of the C62. We saw that in the 2v2 tournament as well. A lot of T62 came in there as well. In the final game. Versus Kama. As there was a Soviet versus Soviet there as well. He played with Hippie in that final match. In the first Friday, one uh, Friday night one event. In which we were joined by Eugen's own Damned for some talk about how things are Eugen. A couple of things that are to come for Steel Division and Co. So check that out. On, the whole VOD is on the YouTube channel as well, if you haven't done so yet. And yeah, let's see what Lathans can do with those T62. I feel like T62, not really with Val in this matchup. Like, it's a solid tank. But against T55s and Medis and Rapiras, dies a bit too quickly. I rather would use more T80Bs or T80BVs, which are really hard to penetrate for these weapons, or even a T80U. Though T80U is a bit risky because enemy has cluster bombers and so on that can be rather cost efficient against that. But yes, as I, feel, as I said, I feel like T80BV, a lot of T80BVs would be my attempt on cracking this fight. Instead of T62s. But that's me. Let's see how Leifens do it, does it. Pioneers with Lamb Vefrex coming in. The first tank here on the side of Rampage as well. In the form of a T55. Slowly rolling over this field here. Coming at us now. Rolling by. T55 with ATGM. With a Sackloss. Coming in here. On this pretty nice map that you might know as a 10v10 map as well. You can see here the 10v10 map in the background that you can play on as well in that game mode or 4v4 or any other matchup on the big one if you want to as well because you can host servers or lobbies with that map as well. TADU coming in. Oh, yeah, Alpha uh, TDU coming in here. MTLB sitting on the other side. Coop, Strollas, and Co. sitting there. T30s sitting in the rear. Conkers coming up. Two. And I have no clue what. Oh, that was a. A team missile going. A uh, AA missile flying by. The Mi-8 MTA. And, yeah. Let's see. Let's see. Lathan's sitting in here. Chilling out. And these BMPs do the job. Conquerors coming up in the north. A 
what is going to happen here. A lot of motor struckies sitting over here. Stalemate has set in. Saperi RPO shit, sitting in the forest. No supply truck here. It's surprising. Usually you want your, your RPOs really close to supply. So that you can resupply them ASAP. Vulture Mega Stove really shouldn't run into this wall. But yeah, you want to have your RPOs as close as to, you can have to supply. Big mistake there, I think, by Leifens. Do not have a supply truck right here. Right there. Just run back to resupply all the RPOs, run back in and shoot another four flamethrowers into your enemy's faces. Run back, run in. As with out flamethrowers, these units are not even close to how as effective as they are with flamethrowers. Oh my god. MiG-31s. Not being able to kill off a MiG-21 is really unlucky there. Lathan's really unlucky there. And D-30s now. Starting their massacre. Really good aim, and they just ravaged the Saperi RPO. All but one is up down. MTLB also being here. Another reason why you should never send a Peri RPO on their own. You always want to have a motor stalky with them. Otherwise, the 50 cult trucks on the other side just roll forward and just kill them all. A super one sided massacre here. Rampage with the Kale Phil. Meanwhile, Red Svetka over here, chilling out. 100mm hitting over here as well. Well, it's the BMP2s now on the move. Rapira under fire by ATGMs. Gets hit, gets killed. Another ATGM flying. That's the Motor Stalking Medis over here. Also, do shoot around. MTLB goes down. Watch him go over here. Under heavy fire as well. Try to defend himself. Kill something at least. That's over here. Leifant finally took over this forest. Surprising we don't see a CV in the center here from Rampage yet. Could have a tick on his opponent. And... Yeah, I feel like this map could live with a bit of better zone output. Oh my god, this is stray. Oh, I think it's stray missile of a MiG-31 just hit a TADU and did 4 damage to it. Also, one MiG-31 there went down. Got a k The other one got a kill. MiG-31 will get out this time most likely. Oh no, that's a lot of fire as well. MiG-21 though went down. MiG-31 will get out. TADU rolling forward. A lot of MTLB now pushing through this forest. Of Claire also got the roll back here. Ooh. Nasty steal there. Nasty steal. Rampage, really lucky there. E62. And Motostrocky moving in against the enemy Falcher Makers. He's 55 from the rear. Trying to help out. Medis. Trying to hit the BMP2. Not quite hitting there with the first shot. Another RPG, uh, ATGM will fly though. And might hit. No, still not. EADU now really close to killing off the Falter Magers. There they go. But now BMP2 gets hit by the T55. Tries to hit it with its own ATGM. Can the T55 finish it off? Yes, it can. EADU now. With some ATGMs. But under fire by two at the same time as well. Doesn't hit with its own. Lost one more hit point to an ATGM from over here. Rapira falls to the shot though. TADU with the heat hit. T62 goes down in flames. As I said, T62 is quite easily penetrated by the AT weapons of the 4th. And now TADU here under attack by the Cluster Bomber. Cluster Bomber, oh my god, really lucky. Gets the Cluster Bombs out. A lot of missiles. First missile was a hit. Didn't quite get killed enough, uh, uh, fast enough afterwards. So, it still got its cluster out, got the kill on to the TADU, and that's why I said TADBB would be my weapon of choice. Relatively hard to kill for everything on the enemy side with its their AT capabilities. And a bit more cost efficient in general in this matchup. Has basically the same damage output against the enemy. And if you lose one to a cluster bomber, it basically is a fair trade when it comes to point. And a better trade for you when it comes to cards. So, that's why I would go for TADBs. BVs or Bs, even. 
uh, instead of tier to use. That's the BMP twos over here moving into the forest. Another snap coming in here from the rear. W fifty going home. Cube sitting on the front line. And enemy counter battery came in here. Two D thirties went down. To the fire of D thirties on Leifen's side. Leifen now with two D thirties of their own. So that's quite nice. We have some artillery battles here. Rampage now has to be more careful. The 30s also now firing to the south. All Lathans here. That's the artillery of Rampage. What is this firing upon? Is it now counter battery? It kind of looks like it. Yes. Counter battery now coming in from the other side. Lathans tries to avoid it. Is moving the D30 already away. I think it's working. I think it's working. I think that is a full dodge unless it's really on the left side. Ah, the last couple of shots. No. Great dodge there by Lathans. Next fire barrage though. Comes on another one. Ah, this D30 might get hit directly. No. Is dodged as well. Good movement. And now shooting back. Did the ones on the other side mo do move at all? No, they didn't. Ah, but this one... Ah, it moved slightly as well. Good job by Lathans. Might win the artillery war this way. Let's see what his four guns can do to this D30. Ah, they look good with the first couple of hits. Yes, they get the kill. So Lathans starting to silence Rampage's artillery. Which was so effective against the Zaperiapi in the south. With the re right moves here. With the right micro. Really on top of it. Good job there to Leifens. Getting another artillery gun silent. And two is not a critical mess anymore. Two guns can't kill one enemy D30 with a single salvo usually. Four, like three to five is usually where you want to be. So... That's to get problematic here when it comes to artillery, and maybe not really worthwhile investing into anymore. For Rampage. Do these guns move? Yeah, these guns start moving again. Okay, starts to dodge now. Interesting here. Really good. Really strong there. Really great dodge by Leifens. But a lot of T-55s now massing for a big assault push here from Rampage. Let's see where this can go. Also, um, Alpha Fitz, you asked for TLDR for the future of ST2. ST2 is not going anywhere. Um, yeah, Eugen will support it with more one more big DLC and most likely a lot of small DLCs and patches and smaller patches. Like, don't expect any big changes like a map editor or so anymore. But small changes, like, for example, Time Limit is coming with the next patch. And obviously, Balance patches will still come for the foreseeable future. One more map coming with Torter at least as well. How many more? If you get any more maps afterwards, we'll see. It's for sure not in the main focus of Eugen anymore. Like, forever. As if they ever gonna touch, like, something with World War II again, it's most likely gonna be a Steel Division 3. But there will support... The, the game for a quite good long, while longer. Like, I would expect at least like two or three more Nemesis packs, including patches with it coming up, bug fixes, and like balance patches coming with them, supported by the strike team and so on. Mad Mad is still really motivated. Mad Mad has a lot of ideas for the old stuff. So. If it would be up to Mad Matt, he would also create bigger things. <laughs> but obviously, Eugen has limited resources. And their resources are mostly going into this game by now. So, yeah. That is the TLDR on that. D30s here. Now up back to 3. For Rampage. 
and let's see what they can do. Another D30 coming in, in actually once more. So, T55s down on the south. Hitting as well. Meanwhile, Lathans with the big flank here. Oh boy. Might actually also steal, ba steal back his own Ural here. It seems like he did so. Well, it's... Yeah, got his own Ural back. And a lot of EMP2s moving forward. And they, those are actually pretty solid against E55s. If they can get their uh, suck loss off. The suck loss, uh, the Conquerors uh, are pretty solid ATGMs against E55s. And if you, have, if you have so many BMPs, you kill them off pretty quickly. TADU also, a new one is back here. That's in the north. We have some TADBVs and t some T62s. And some BMP2s, but we'll see how effective this T55 storm will be. Still, no CV in here is a big mistake by Rampage. Like, he should have the 100 points around right now, by now. Just put a one in here, just get a tick on his opponent, put Lathans under pressure. Like, yes, it's a bit using the map advantage, but that's what you have to do. It could be two here, in a 1v1 here. So, yeah. D30s in the rear. Setting around. Might need some supply soon. Waiting, I guess, for the D30s of the opponent to fire again so that they can counter battery there. But more BMP ones with much shots coming in here. So all the cheap spam up for rampage. Let's see what can happen here. Ah no, BMP2 is actually shooting now down to the south. Not hitting much there yet, but should be able to destroy the building. T55 is moving to the south. Uh, BMP2 is coming in a bit piecemeal. Once from over here, not moving forward. But now they come around. T55 under fire. Ah, smoke coming in on the side of Lathans though, stopping a lot of his own ATGMs to fly. Not the greatest engagements here out of Lathans. Motor Strelkies. Moving in the numbers, but T55 and SPW70 getting some good hits in there. Motostrelki under heavy fire. The MP2 getting hit by ATGMs over here as well. T55 at least gets killed off. TADU trying to help out. Shooting at the Hotchaviga uh, Medis. The Medis not doing too much against the TADU. Ah, uh, Lathan's still disengaging here. Not really worthwhile. You can just tank for missile isles. If necessary, you, like maximum you take for damage. But you kill the Fudge Amiga Medis and then you get a repair truck up and repair this damage. Like disengaging with the TADU away from a Fudge Amiga Medis is just a mistake. That thing can't really kill you. <laughs> like, if it hits with all of its ATGM, it does 4 damage to you. So, really, you don't have to worry of 1v1 in there. On this range. Obviously, if you're really close, might be something different if it can get the side shot and so on. But on these ranges here, it doesn't really matter. There is a CV around here now. Or is it getting called in? No, there is a CV around here that could move forward. But it is not moving any just yet. And here we go. A big push coming up. E55s and BMPs rolling forward in masses. Big smoke wall set up. East German storm. The Zerg swarm on the way. Can it be stopped? Units of Lathans not reacting at all to the smoke wall. Usually want to maneuver around it. But get something in here or so. At least see something. Lathan's not reacting at all, and that's critical. Like, ooh, this is a lot of T55s and co. Moving in here. Moving in here. Great smoke wall from the D30s. D30s on the other side. Silent. Lathan's not maneuvering at all. What the hell? Moving T80s to itself. Instead of trying to get them in here. Like, T80s over here could massacre this from the side. What are they doing? Lathan's. Okay, Lathans wants to push this out, but... Dude! 
The center! You could massacre these T-55s easily from here. Oh my god. The, the, the T-80BBs were in a perfect spot for the flank here. They're not using it. And this is looking super dangerous now. T-80BB is great on long range against the T-55s. And you can see they start to do real damage there. And the T-80BB does fall. And there's a lot of infantry, a lot of BMP-2s, a lot of T-55s coming in. CV on the side of Lefens has to be evacuated. TADBV is now coming around, but a bit too late. And yeah, this is problematic. This is problematic. Mortar striking coming in. Then I guess he had the CVs on the wrong side. Like, yeah, not having a CV. Oh, he has a, had a CV up here. How did the CV not see that? Lol. What? How did the CV not see the T-55s here? Huh? Okay. That feels like stupid. That feels really stupid. If the T-55... If, how did the Red Red guy from over here didn't see the T-55 pushing over the open? T-ADBV moving around over here. And a lot of units coming in. But, I mean, if you get smoked like this, you know something is coming. Like, you should maneuver to try to get something somewhere <laughs> but rampage now getting really heavily overrun here plus uh no lathans by rampage this push this way around and tadbv is now eating the conquerors and that was not a healthy one i think it was to the side armor yeah it must have been to the side of armor of the damage it dealt so really bad for the tadbv really really bad more ATGMs flying from over here. Another Conqueror is in place. Conqueror is now for the cheaper price. Pretty worthwhile. For the truck is running over the open also. Getting hit hard. And the T-55 and BMP-2 spam here. Working out perfectly. A lot of AA hitting the SU-25. SU-25 goes down. And I don't think there is anything Rampage can be stopped with now. Lathans can try. But I don't think T-62s are the answer. And I don't think there is an answer anymore. This was a well set up push, and it is really going places now. Lathan's still trying with the counter push on the south. I mean, if you could maybe do something around here, but oh my god. Yeah, T55s are cheap, and if you can get them into places, they are really cost efficient. And there's a lot of them now in the south as well. These are only DA models, so you really want to get enemies close and comfortable before you engage with them. But they still can do stuff. Mi-24P with its cocon also helpful to deal with enemies that leave the AA range. Tunguska now on the battlefield, okay. So he has Osas, Tunguskas and Coops. Okay, interesting. Interesting AA setup. SC-22 with Cluster is now trying to hit the TADU. TADU gets deleted. Yeah, as I said, not a big fan of TADUs in this matchup. And not a big fan of T-62s either. TADUs and T62s feel both a bit useless. Well, like, not as effective. Like, I guess not useless. But I feel like when it comes to cost efficiency, TADBBs and TADBs outperform them heavily in this matchup. So, really surprised to see the focus on these two units. And Rampage now getting up to a plus six. And there's really nothing Lathans can do at this stage. TADBV trying to come in. SU-22 with HE bombs will finish off the BRDM. Well, yeah, Falcher Megas is trying to disengage over here. Left the zone for once, it seems. Ah, oh, no, BRDM coming in for Lathans here as well. But still a plus four. CV went down. Rampage is up a lot of points. And another ATGM on the way up to, to the TADBV. TADBV over here also taking heavy damage. Lathans now. With the desperation push, but that doesn't seem to work out. More Zaperi RPOs coming in in the south. But with all the T55s, Zaperi RPOs really ain't the unit you need right now. The ADBV under heavy fire still here in the center. No CV in the north. And with only 6 movement minutes remaining and Rampage still on a plus 4. And no CV on the way for here. And nothing on the way to stop any other CVs on the map from ticking, basically. 
or getting any in here. It's not looking like Leifens has any shot of turning this around. Shilka goes down here. Me 24p coming in with an ATGM, trying to hit the TADU. Doesn't seem to be able to do so though. And Rampage on the way to victory here. More D30s. Trying to get ready. Conquerors. Shooting to the south. Might get a nice side shot here. Ah, does miss. But Rampage still up on the plus four. 5 minute 31 remaining. Mi 8 empty gunship also in a nice spot. Gets it down. MiG 23L MLD. And the fire by the Shilka. Might go down there as well. Ah, does survive. The other AA out of missiles, it seems. Or at least not able to fire. Not quite close enough then, I guess. But doesn't really matter. No CV coming up here. And there's not really anything left here to push with. Four Lathans. Five minutes remaining. And the plus four is continuously taking for a Rampage. What a strong game here. Like, what a strong setup for the push there. By Rampage. Interesting batteries with the D30s on both sides. But yeah, the setup with the smoke was great. Now trying to snipe the CV. Of Lathans here with the artillery. Doesn't seem too, too success successful, but doesn't really matter either. Would just make it a plus six, but it wouldn't change the outcome of the game. As that one already has been sealed a while ago. CV now on the way here. Still we leave it on a plus two for Rampage. In four minutes, you just don't close that 1000 point gap. You just really can't. So, yeah. Rampage will take game number one. And Lifens will have to focus on game number two to change the outcome here. In this one. SU-22 AG bombs coming in. In good number. Coop. Trying to get some hits in. Ooh. MiG-31 coming in as well. AG bombs hitting well too. Rampage. On a plus four. ATGMs flying for the TADBB. Oh boy. On the other side, MiG 31 chilling out. Me too. Will get shut down by a Tunguska at least. But it doesn't really matter. Might even get the snipe on the CV here now. Ah no, I don't think so. AA on from the other side is trying to retaliate. 1d30 here of Rampage went somewhat low. Doesn't get repaired anymore. He, he, uh, yeah, might go down here now. One more kill, maybe. Yes, one more kill there for Lathans. For the KD. But for the KD only. As the last 2 minute and 39 seconds tick down. Lathans. Not one to give up, I think, it seems, but... Yeah, just for the KD, not right now. It's just for the KD. KDU pushing in the south. BRDM is ready here. Might equalize the tick. But in two minutes you just can't get 1200 point. It's just not possible. Like, even if you would control all maps, or all zones, it would not be quite enough. Oh, it would be really close. It might be a draw then. But... Well, actually then he might... But yeah, it's just... That's obviously not realistic. With a plus 14. He might be getting places. No, even then it wouldn't be. It would be 80 points. No, it would only be 1,200 points. Like, he would get a draw then, maybe. And here we go. Surrender from Lathans. Got quite close to the KD again in the end. But Rampage got the kill. Big 31s did a good job in the end. Osas. The D30s. One of the D30s got three of his opponent. So really good counter battery there. Though the D30s didn't do much else. Like, yeah, they got four kills there. 
five kills actually. He got five D30s of his opponent, but his D30s didn't do anything else. If they would have helped out elsewhere a bit more, maybe they could have done well. As you can see, T80 BB, right tank for the job, killed a lot of T55s, killed some MTLB. That's why I said T80 BB might be the tank for the job here. TD80 U does it also well. But cluster bombers are the issue there. So that's why I recommend bringing in the ADBVs there. If you ever have to fight this matchup yourself. On the other side, Falter Magers. We have a good start. The D30s more focusing on other things. And some nice kills with these Maddies, Falter Magers, for example. But nothing with some super crazy things as. Nothing in the GDR deck really does for that. So only a couple of kills here on each of these units. But VP to Rampage got game number one here. We will go into game number two in a second. So see you all there in a close bit. And we are back into this game. And Rampage versus Legends is still uh, another pack versus pack game but this time we have other pack divisions as on the left side rampage now has the kda bezirk erfurt the kampfgruppen der arbeiterklasse sind auf dem schlachtfeld angekommen whilst leifens brings it out the 39th guards motorstalky division which is a powerhouse with its bmp3s and a lot of good helicopters and a lot of SU-25s. So we will see what they can do. Also have T-80BVs, have T-80Bs, have T-62s. And on the other side, now even weaker tanks. Only st stock standard T-55s, T-34-85s, <laughs> if you want to have those, and BT-76s. So really bad tanks. But... Also some Rapiras with speed, Spaznat screws, Spaznats in general, good air tap, solid helicopter tap, and great cheap and spammable infantry. Great cheap and spammable infantry. And Fagots coming in in the north, Book coming in over here. So. Yeah, should be interesting, right? They got some T62s as well. Right, right. I forgot about it because it was not in the first build. They came in as late reinforcements. They came in in late as late reinforcements. So, yeah, should be interesting. A lot of spaz nuts. Hello there, MD FCR. How are you doing? How are you doing? Alfclair is in the north. Let's see what else comes in here. Okay, did I stop the replay? Let me double check. Oh yeah, I'm a full idiot, if we would say in German. I somehow pressed pause. Okay, let's fast forward a bit to the start. A bit closer to the start. <laughs> Bro, what do you mean? Let's go. A lot of Spaznuts Helix coming around. Aufklär is coming around as well. KDA Schützen and Spaznuts. Moto Schützen and so on coming in as well. What's down on the south? A lot of Superior POs. Rancer and Co. The MP3s on the other side. Moto Stalkies. P62 MVs. A lot of other units. And the FCR, I don't get you at all. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the GRU, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I just say Gru. I mean, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes long otherwise. It's an acronym. And like in Germany, we say it like BMW and so on. Like we, we, BMW, we don't put any extra performance in there. So why not just put it like this? VW, BMW, ADAC. Like we put them quick out. Adidas. <laughs> Our acronyms like really quickly after each other. So just do it crew. Yeah. <laughs> I know Americans CIA FBI. Americans like that. But we Germans. In fighting among different. communists, I press subscribe. <laughs> Lol. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Dave Packlos. Yep. East Germany fighting up against the evil suppressors of the the Soviet regime. Soviets putting them back in line. And thanks for the subscription, packet packet loss. Much appreciated. But yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, now I, I now I get you. But yeah, we Germans do it differently. Like we we don't really pronounce the, the letters like that. We we just put them together in one word. Like you don't say ah, adi das. You don't say that. Like or B M V. You usually just say, say B M V. Like you say it fastly together. And let's see what these two will bring now. Did I stop it again? I feel like I stopped it again, didn't I? Am I stupid? Am I really stupid? How did I stop? Is there a hotkey for it? Or did I just stop it when I did hide the panel? I... <laughs> Sorry, everyone who's <laughs> just watching. <laughs> yeah, it was a long day. It was a great day, but it was a really exhausting day. Did a, did a lot of things today. For example, preparing 10 YouTube videos because I'm leaving on holiday tomorrow. And I, well, no, even more than 10 videos. And I wanted to give you a video at least every day over the next 10 days on YouTube. This one will be one of them. So I will have to finish this afterwards. This year. Um, get it up on YouTube. And get it cut up there as well. But... Yep. Yeah, other than that... Everything else is ready, but it was a long day of working there. Then also some other stuff for IRL going on. So, yeah, forgive me. There might be a hotkey, yeah. But I don't think there is. I just think I'm just stupid. Otherwise, I wouldn't know what the hotkey would be. Don't know. Motor Stalky coming in. I think I just... I'm just stupid and misclicked it. Alf Clever coming in on one side. There's not screw. Versus BTR. Flag 57. Pack. We also don't say PAK. For example, we say Pack. <laughs> you see, that's like Panzer Abwehr Kanone. It would be otherwise. Uh, we Germans, as we also just smash words together, like, and it's a word. <laughs> so we do the same with acronyms. <laughs> it's interesting. Like, I've never thought about that in the FCR. But thanks for bringing it up. Interesting topic. Yeah. How structures in grammar change behavior in s small things like that. Like the, the GRU slash GRU. Coming in here. A lot of rush in here. Osa though. Ooh. Can they get a snipe here? Ooh, they should be gave, getting a snipe here. Oh, that's like... Ooh. Come on, Osa. Come on, Osa. Uh, yeah, Osa gets one eliminated. There might be survivors in the crash. No survivors in the crash. Grancer versus GRU. Gru. Whatever. Fighting over here. Well, it's like 100mm 
aka Rapira, is coming over here. Rancer versus Besnet Screw fighting in the building. More infantry coming up here for Leifenstone. Plus three for Leifens as well. No CV on the other side just yet. Coming in now. Whilst Rampage is sitting here. Trying to push in a bit further. Trying to push onto the other side. But I love BTR and Grand Sapphire coming in from the other side. Rapira aiming up. Cannot get the kill. Should be able to. Rampage shooting as well. Hitting there one by one. Ooh, Rapira nearly hitting the fla. That would have been good. Hook sitting in the rear. One of the really big good weapons of this deck. The most OP, or at least the strongest anti-air weapon in the game. Longest range, really good accuracy. Four missiles as well. The book is a really, really good AA piece. It is radio guided, but seed planes currently are iffy. And that doesn't even matter because there are no seed planes, uh, seed planes to begin with in Lathan's 39th Guards motorized. As it's one of two decks that doesn't have any seed in its arsenal. The other one being Commando Zut. It also legs that. Spesnats moving around over here. It's a parry moving forward. Coming in here as well. P62 MVs and Motor Strikes coming in there. SC22 M4 plus the bomber on the way. Trying to hit the BMP3s and T62 here. These could spread out. Okay, they're not spreading out well though. So they all die. Bad micro there on Leifen's end. Bad micro there on Leifen's end. Doesn't get the kill there. Osa out of ammo. Ooh, that's rough. That's a great kill there. T6, uh, SU-22M getting out again. Can come around later for more kills like this. And that was a juicy 100, 200 point kill there. Out of Rampage SU-22. Really juicy kill. Something went down over here. I have no clue what exactly that was. Was it a helicopter of... No, that was a... What was that? That was a plane of some sort. Whose plane was that? Ooh, getting the Osa now as well with a cluster bomber. Okay. Okay, some plane went down there. No clue. Was that Leifen's plane getting shut down by some books? I'm not quite sure. Mi8MT moving forward. The parry under fire. Besnuts hitting hard around as well. The parry APO going down. Besnuts getting eliminated at the same time though. Trancer under fire. KDA Schützen helping out as well. Mi8MT with its 180 rockets. Doing a good job, but needs to disengage right now, right here. Down to one hit point. You want to save this. Ooh, Rampage, come on. Where's the micro? Where's the micro, Rampage? Where's the micro? There's the micro. Okay, coming in a bit late. Coming clutch enough, though, it seems like. MTLB, not quite there yet to shoot it down. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. that was... That was quite right, something. But a lot of BMP3s now rolling forward. And there's not too much to hold against them just yet. As a lot of investments went into the Spaznuts and into air yet now. So far for Rampage and into AA, the book is not quite cheap, so the ground forces here are rather lackluster. Couple more KDAs here, could be quite big right now. Cluster bombers coming through, getting another double kill here, but some more ground units right now would be really nice. Oh my god, another two infantry units getting killed off, but no. His flux die as well, and there's really just nothing here for the rest now. Yes, air kills are nice and all, and over time they get you great value, if you can come in continuously. But if you don't hold the ground, that doesn't really help you. You need something to hold the ground here. And I don't see much coming up either. Only a couple of T-62s. The Mi-8 MTA still will be out for a while. 
cluster bomber is ready at least for another cluster bombing. And Glyphon's really not on top with the micro just yet in this game. We'll have to get that a bit better. Fagot goes down though. Spaznuts coming in here, getting a BTR killed. Surprised to see Glyphon's not pushing harder into this direction. Now moving north. The cluster SU-22 went home. Another Osa and a Pyrosa are around. Moving slowly forward. BMP3 hit the Spaznuts. Spaznuts heavily under fire. Rampage on the plus two. Slightly ahead, but another BTR coming up. More infantry is unit needed. Okay, recon helicopters. I don't feel like that's what you need right now here. Rampage. I feel like KDA Schützen is what you need. And what you could get quite a lot of per minute. You like you get four at least per minute. So, yeah, I'm surprised we don't see more of these right now. BMP3s firing. Meanwhile, over here, more KDA shits are coming in. Or at least you get, like, nearly four. Like, without transport, you get more than four per minute. If you take that part off. But Rampage has the point advantage, at least for now. But the network is coming online on the other side, so the airplanes will have a harder time. Lots of Eglas, lots of Osas, lots of Priusas coming in here. Motostrakis sitting in the forest here now. Middle points have been captured for both sides now. And more T-62s and T-80BVs coming in for Lathans. Just has to keep the SU-22 clusters away from them now. And then they will be great. Luck 57. Now also representative by the 57mm icon. Not having the placeholder there anymore. That led to some confusion on my end. On players' ends as well. Yet and MT could really use a supply truck here. Not getting it just yet. And TLB supply currently moving to the front line. And the zone in the middle not being contested just yet. The MP3s will get repaired in a second. Got he quite heavily damaged. Seed plane coming in. Let's see if that hits anything. As I said, seed currently a bit unreliable. Also, the range on these is rather lackluster. And it seems like Lathans was microing there. So the, yeah, seed. Really not doing its job at the moment, to be honest. I'd rather use cluster and AT GMs currently as anti-air than using seed planes, because something feels off there. I hope Eugen can figure out what, but yeah, they have to do something about seed. Like, that's one of the things that for sure has to be a focus in the early access. Fires on to... The Osa gets the hit there at least. Okay. SU-22 will get shut down though. And the seed plane now also is obviously too, really deep. Could get shut down here as well. Well, will get shut down by the SU-27. And didn't really pay off there either. As didn't really silence the AA for long enough to for the other plane to be safe. Got one shot off, got one kill. But yeah, both planes went down in the end. So, and it's more expensive than a Nosa. So, really, really not paying off there. If you're somewhat good, enemy seed just feels pretty useless. Like, it's really easy to micro against it, and even if you don't micro against it, it seems pretty shit at hitting stuff. Like, way worse than its accuracy tells you it should be. Much it's in here. Getting hit. ATGM. Coming, flying this way as well. E62 will get hit. The ADBV coming in as well. Like, for example, in my 35th deck and so on, I just used the um, SU25 ATGM to hit enemy AA. It, <laughs> as if that thing actually can tank AA missiles pretty well. And its ATGM hits even if the enemy turns off, off his a, uh, AA pieces. But planes just don't hit then anymore. Plus, yeah, 
they kill <laughs> with better accuracy, it feels like, than the seed. Even if the seed fires its missile. So, yeah. Seed needs to get some better effects to really represent what it is supposed to do. Like, it, uh, either enemy A can't be turned on instantaneously after it's being turned off, so that its suppression effect is, like, represented. That, like, the enemy can't just fire when seed is around if they decide to turn it off. Or something like seed gives other planes around more ECM. Or something like that. Or makes enemy AA less accurate. Like, things like that should be needed. Like, a n better implementation of the mechanic of suppression. Doesn't need to be m super more deadly, it just needs to... Uh, ju uh, they just need to check. I think there's a bug with the accuracy. But once they... if they, uh, Like, on their ATG... Uh, like, uh, seed missiles, their radio-seeking missiles, they don't need to be more accurate. I think they don't need to be more deadly, they just need to be better at actually suppressing enemy air defense and silencing the enemy radar AA for the while that you buy them. Especially for the heavy price you pay for them. As they are often more expensive than the ATGM planes and so on as well. But Leipzig's now up. 2 plus 2 as we return to this game now, <laughs> topic wise. Another seed plane coming around. Rampage under struggle here. Leipzig's now. Oh using the spot that they got into here and the plus two for Leifmans is taking in and Rampage is in trouble gets the hit here by the SU-22 22 gets the kill Book though firing and getting the kill in return great kill W L A coming around as well. Me eight M T A, uh, M T, flying in here. The M P threes from the other side, rolling forward. And the B M P three is a deadly piece of equipment. The nine M one hundred seventeen is a super fast flying, super long range A T G M. The one hundred millimeter is great in dealing damage to infantry. And the thirty millimeter also can shred in C Q C. Against infantry, pretty well as well, but also against lightly armored vehicles with its three penetration. So that is quite nice. And the 100mm actually has one of the longest ranges for any gun in this game as well, with 2400 meters. So that is quite helpful as well. And on the other side, T62Ms coming in now, but they are all classed by the T62M1s and especially MVs, and also obviously any of the TADs. The MP3s in the north might get hit. Is there... The Busa over here seems to have died. I'll move to the middle. So the BMP3s will get killed off. Gives the KDA shots in a bit more room for dealing damage. And T62s also maybe. Some more space for damage there. Plus two for Lathans does continue. And Rampage under pressure. Lathans on the way to equalizing it in week number one of the August monthly here. Getting a point on the board. That's on the other side. The D30 battery though, coming up again. Can Rampage make it work again? It worked really well last time. So far, no artillery on the other side. Can he, uh, Rampage get enough D30s to maybe start the leading infantries or AA and then get the planes in again? Like maybe if you can hit some OSAS or so. And then the enemy A, A runs out of strength, and then you can come in with your clusters and bombers for time and again, and they, uh, like bite off bite bit by bit of the enemies. You know, it's that way. You could come back over the long range, but the plus two here is taking relentlessly. Under pressure for sure. Igla sailing around here. Yes, it can't damage armor, but you can keep it outside of enemy gun ranges and shoot at enemy soft targets from further away than the enemy guns can shoot. I know it's not an AT gun, but I mean, for the longer ranges against AT, you also have the ATGM. And the ATGM outranges every gun as well. Like, that means you can keep the BMP3 over 
outside of enemy gun ranges and you both boast uh, threat to enemy armor targets and um, enemy soft targets whilst other things with long range ATGMs just be a threat to enemy uh, hard targets they are actually a threat to both thanks to their long range on their uh, HE gun on the BMP3 Igla meanwhile moving north BMP3 moving in as well Mi8 MTA coming in for the recon Osa coming in as well and ha having actually a gun that deals good damage against soft targets is also something nice as yeah, a lot of other vehicles like that currently soft target damage is sometimes a bit low on some of the vehicles especially against units in buildings as you can see here a lot of firepower coming in here like it, in other spaces it's usually fi mostly fine buildings currently though seem to be a bit strong as there's a lot of fire coming down onto these units and buildings and they go down maybe a slight bit too slowly but they will go down eventually and it seems like Leifens has a critical mess up here in the north now as well I don't think a couple of T-62s are enough against this wrecking ball of a force we will see but there's just so much stuff here now for Leifens Rampage really needs to silence the AA here if he wants to have a chance against the enemy here he needs some planes Eglas going a bit low there getting hit both both down one, by, to one hit point but they don't get finished and Ural is around to repair them up if the Ural doesn't get killed Ooh, Ural takes damage as well but it also doesn't get finished helicopter gets killed off and Rampage under pressure E30 will fire again will fire up to the north let's see what that can hit Eglas coming in for the repairs so yeah that's a bit annoying for Rampage there neither getting the kill onto the transport nor onto the Eglas as air really seems to be the only hope right now maybe some smoke play like last time but I feel like Leifens is so far ahead this time already that it, that doesn't really matter the mouth there is actually trying to sneak around here might be unlucky with the Mi-8, uh, Mi-24V finding them or no, Leifens actually seems to be on the hunt it's not quite a luck based thing here it seems like ah, but the officer seems to have spotted the BTR so BTR sniping is on but BTR is an armored vehicle so it doesn't go down as easily and it's also already running Mi-24 also now finds the UATs not quite finding the officer just yet but the officer have to be careful here as well and Leifens is going fo forward SU-22 with some reckless behavior there wouldn't have been worthwhile even if the kill would have happened and yeah with not shooting down the AA of the enemy that deep dive was just way too reckless and that felt like a desperation move out of Rampage for sure for 90 minutes still on the, on the list but yeah he's not silencing the enemy AA losing his most valuable assets with the SU-22 cluster bombers is not something that can just happen like that and it just feels like a bit of a GG here now Leifens got the combined arms online that you want as 39th armored uh, 39th mechanized and there just doesn't seem to be much here that Rampage can do at this stage interesting start from Rampage as I said a slight over investment maybe into air otherwise controlling this could have been possible maybe like the air hits at the beginning work great once more we'll try it with the smoke push but I s just feel there is too much this time behind this Leifens is too ready this time push comes in with T-55s again this time KDA shoots in the number but there's a lot of units here there's a lot of units this time here for Leifens you really would need great engagements here I'm not quite sure if these are as possible also smoke shield not as great as last time things still get hit here oh that's a lot of transports there getting hit E55 is already nearly down units getting hit in the open here yeah, the smoke not as perfectly timed as last time 
ADBV from up north also hitting the T55s. T55s basically all down already nearly. Besnuts and KDA shots are coming in, but ooh, HE bomber. Is it on target? Oh, it is. Oh, <laughs> oh no. And CV coming in here. Lathan's on the plus two. Rampage is running out of stuff here. Things moving forward. T62 coming in as well. Cluster bomber from the other side, but the Saperi leader doesn't matter about that. Busa will fall. ADBV does get damaged, but another cluster bomber bites the dust. And as I said, those are the most valuable assets. The AE network, though, too good on Lathan's side to let those escape. And it just seems super stuck here now. now well, got a lot of BMP3s actually. E62s from the side helped out. But Lathan's still on the plus two. A lot of assets in the north. Everything over here got killed off. Rampage out of stuff here. And Lathan's is just pushing in. T62M gets the KDA shits in. Motostralki on the heavy fire. KDA shots and pushing up top of it. BMP, uh, the D30s getting good hits on the infantry here. Rampage really good with targeting with those. HE Bomber also getting nice hits in here. MiG-21 getting hit hard in the south. SU 62M getting the KDA shots over here. RPG 7 gets reloaded. Does some damage, but not too, too much. Other one goes down to the T62s on Rampage's side, though. The user needs to be a bit careful. In the center, it seems like Rampage, together with the D30s, actually might be able to do it. But Mi-24 is trying to help out from the rear. Book, though. Good hit. Is Rampage able to push to through here? Might be. But a lot of forces now coming in from the north. A lot of tanks. And the cluster bombers are all down. Like, a cluster hit here right now... Could be game changer, but I don't think there is a cluster bomber left in the deck of Rampage. A bit too reckless of these. The one that went for this one coming in now, killing off this, could actually be a game changer. Unless, but yeah, it's not there. T62 trying to hit off the T55. T62s have to be careful. If they go low in morale, they really have a super low rate of fire. And the T55s actually can be somewhat dangerous. Dipping heavily in rate of fire now. As they are start, rate of fire is already pretty low. And the D30 is actually keeping up the damage, but this just seems too strong. This just seems too strong. Friends are moving forward, and this is an armored column full of great things. MiG 25 HE trying to hit it. Lathans, once more, not great on the micro away. HE bombs landing a bit of target though. MiG 25 went down. The Perry leader coming back in. TADBV here. Still tanking. Not getting hit by the Rapira. And the KDA shits in here will take heavy damage as well. D30 is really doing a good job here. Really trying to bring this game around. Of Blayfans still up on the plus two. 14 minutes remaining. Rapira's trying to come in from the side. T55 coming in as well. What is coming in on Lathan's side? More T-80s, more Motor Strokies. Ooh, T-62 getting hit. Two Rapiras coming online. That might actually be able to crush this. Gets another nicely, nice kill here. BMP-3 falls as well. Rapiras down now, though. Still three T-60s remaining. One more coming up from the north. 100mm from over here. Helping out. Plus two, still for Lathans. 14 minutes remaining. Is Rampage coming in with the comeback? Do the D30s maybe get some more stuff done here? They already worked overtime hardcore, but another big reinforcement coming in in the south. It's a Perry RPO. Some more BMP3s. A T80 BV. And this is once more heavy, heavy pressure on Rampage here from the south. And there doesn't seem to be much here. Feels like the artillery might need to work overtime to get to solve this one. T55 really in trouble. Gets one-shotted here by the T80. Rapira trying to finish it off. 
but even if it hits, it doesn't deal too too much damage here with its uh, ATGM and uh, Motostralki BMPs and the BMP3s rolling forward to finish off the KDA Schützen. The ADBV from over here also doing a good job. B24 coming in with some ATGMs. It's a good one for this matchup. I'm not quite sure if it's good enough. And the plus two continues. Inval D30. Trying to hit the Saperi. Can they do the job? Can they kill off the Saperi over here? 12 minutes remaining only. 1,100 points already behind. More Motostrolki coming in here. Can this be done? Me 24P disengaging. 1,400 points. CV disengaged for a while. But it has just... Seems highly unlikely. More T61s coming in. More mod new KDA shots in as well. But the T80s are really strong in this matchup, as I said. And not having any SU22 clusters now just feels really bad for Rampage. Like, the planes seem to be such an integral part of the strategy. And it felt like a bit of too much of a throwaway, especially if you have the anti. And like uh, the unit to kill off an enemy anti-air with the D30. Like maybe use the seat plane a bit more for finding enemy positions and then hit them up with, a, uh, with the artillery. Instead of going so deep with the seat planes. Things like that. But yeah. That's all ideas and stuff. But Lathan's got it in the end. And that even it out. Great series though, interesting maps, the map, interesting games, interesting divisions. Pact doesn't seem to suffer anymore, guys. As we saw two times packed on packed action here, and that's quite nice. Not gonna lie, that's quite nice. So GGVP to both players. Thanks for playing these. Thanks for joining the monthly tournament. And yep, next monthly tournament will come for sure, guys. So keep your eyes open if you're interested in it. Join the Discord. Discord will have all the announcements for tournaments always up there, so you don't miss it. And we're also planning currently for a Warnall League coming up in the future. Currently, Steel Division League Season 8 is in its final breaths. Playoffs have started. First couple of playoff games already have been played. So a lot of nice things happening there. But yeah, Steel Division and Warnall League both will be part in the future. But for now, Warnall Monthly Tournament. Once again, the match we know here, you can support it without paying anything yourself. Just click some buttons. And yeah, thanks for watching everyone. And see you next time.